Hey there summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for our latest low elo tier list for patch 13.7. In this video, I'll give you a rundown of which champion you need to look out for if you're serious about climbing. Whether it's to learn who to play or know how to ban, this video has something for everyone. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this and let's get started. We'll highlight Olaf this patch because our analysts consider him a great investment for how little time you need to put into learning him. Our analysts consider him not too difficult to learn at about a 3 out of 7. He has little to no counter picks during the laning phase and he's a dominant force, able to spam Q and also thrive in longer extended trades. However, you'll need to practice using his axe and think carefully about how you throw it. Also, you'll want to pay attention to how you're using a shield and gradually make adjustments based on what you observe while learning him. However, once you do master these, you're going to hard carry your games. Even after the nerfs, Olaf is still a solid pick. A lot of players don't know how to deal with his overwhelming pressure and kill power in the early game. Especially in low elo, you'll be able to catch opponents off guard, especially if they're overextended in lane and leave themselves vulnerable to getting chased down with multiple axes. Another great part about playing Olaf is that he hits his power spike very early at only 2 items. You're ready to start carrying fights much earlier than most champions and can lead your team to victory through the course of repeated skirmishes and objective fights. Your goal is to pull ahead and snowball your way to victory off those leads, even a small one is a big deal for Olaf. Next, we'll talk about Fiora. Fiora is definitely on the harder side of characters to learn, but she's far from the most difficult. Despite this, our analysts consider her one of the hardest carries in the game, so it's absolutely worth investing some time into learning her. What makes Fiora so hard to play is that you have to use your parry well as it's really your only defensive tool. Using Q defensively will put it on a longer cooldown, so while it is there, it's not as broken as when it's used to chase down opponents aggressively. Another part that makes her more challenging is the fact that you need to learn how to hit the vitals and positioning around them. Managing this is something that takes time, and you'll need to put some games and practice into Fiora before you really start seeing consistent results. Fiora is still one of the best carries though, because of her top tier 1v1 power. She also scales beautifully, making her a great pick in regards to the we can always win if we stall factor. Low elo games tend to drag on for a lot longer because teams aren't as comfortable closing fast. However, that only makes things easier for Fiora players since you'll be able to continue pressuring the side lanes or eventually hitting a point where you can one-shot carries in teamfights. In the current state of the item meta, a lot of items are very good on Fiora, so she's also in a good spot because of her game balance at the moment. Definitely don't sleep on her and consider picking her up. She'll likely pay off once you climb the high elo as well. That's it for the top lane, so let's head into the jungle next. Next, we'll run through the jungle. Our top picks of this patch are Jarvan, Nocturne, Evelyn, Ramis, Mordekaiser, and Mundo. That said, let's take time to talk about Evelyn. She's rated at a medium difficulty, but you'll get the hang of it after a few games. What makes her so difficult is that she is vulnerable to invades before level 6. You need to be really careful and also consider carefully how you want to path. In addition, you'll want to have a good idea of where the enemy jungler is. Choose your ganks well, and also position perfectly during the late game team fights to have the most carry potential. With her stealth, you do have a bit of freedom, but it's not something that you'll be good at immediately. Put in time and trust that you'll learn by practicing. For her carry potential, what makes Evelyn so good is that players in low elo don't ward nearly as much. Your enemies won't have any idea where you are at most times, so make sure you take advantage of this. She's a huge nuisance to deal with as she can be anywhere because of her stealth. Enemies have to be extremely careful about overextending as they truly never know when they're in danger. Squishies are going to have to live through a nightmare knowing that she could pop out of the shadows and one-shot them. However, one weakness Evelyn does have is that if your enemies build too many defensive items, it significantly cuts down her potency. Next, we'll feature Shivana. She's very easy to play as she has a very fast and healthy jungle clear. The only part is that you'll need to be a little bit careful with your positioning if you're playing her AP. To get the most out of playing Shivana, you want to be flexible and not spam the AP build every single game. What makes Shivana a great carry is that she's great at controlling objectives. Winning Dragon is even more rewarding and the extra damage that she deals to them makes it even easier to secure. Objectives are what win games at the end of the day and having that slight advantage is a huge deal in many games. Like I mentioned earlier, you want to be flexible with Shivana as she can either build defensively, AP, or as a bruiser. No matter what your team needs, you're going to be able to fill up that role and make sure that your team is well rounded. That covers the jungle, so let's talk about the mid lane next. In the mid lane, our top picks for this patch are Aurelian Soul, Anivia, Victor, Malzahar, Vagar, and Swain. Let's go ahead and talk about Victor, one of our OP picks this patch. Victor is a moderately difficult champion to learn and the biggest challenge that you'll need to face is learning how to position correctly. Due to his weak early game, you'll need to play safely, learning how to effectively farm, position, and ward. Early game assassins are also a huge problem as Victor does struggle against the pressure. However, the reason that you're playing Victor is for the later parts of the game, so it's only a fair price to pay. Practice those basics and get good at farming with him and you'll definitely see results. Our analysts have rated him a 7 out of 7 in terms of carry potential. Once he completes 2 items, Victor is an absolute beast with his utility and high damage output. 
He outscales almost every other mid laner at a rapid pace, and the longer the game goes, the better things go for him. He eventually hits the point where he's a person one-shotting the enemies, and your opponents have to be the one that plays fearfully. Malzahar is another champion that will feature. He's got a very safe laning phase and is one of the easiest champions to farm with. You'll be able to consistently rack up farm with him even without putting too much effort and time into him. This will naturally put you ahead of your opponents who are bound to make mistakes while trying to farm. He's rated at a 1 out of 7 for difficulty by our analysts, so definitely give him a try if you want to start seeing results fast or are trying to learn someone to play when autofilled. In terms of carry potential, Malzahar sets up ganks disgustingly well for his jungler. After level 6, it's basically a guaranteed kill every single time. While enemies can try to counter him by building a Quicksilver Sash, remember that this is gold invested and it'll end up making them a little bit weaker until much later into the game when they can upgrade it. Even if they do build QSS, Malzar can easily impact fights with his other abilities or choose to use his ultimate on somebody else. Before moving forward, let me ask you our question of the day. What champion have you had the most fun playing recently? Personally, I like Milio a lot. He brings some unique utility to the game and honestly, it's always nice to experience somebody new. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and let's continue with the video. Moving on to the bottom lane. In the bottom lane, our top picks for this patch are Jinx, Nyla, Ziggs, Jin, and Vagar. Speaking of Jinx, we'll feature her in the bottom lane this patch. Our analysts have rated her 3 out of 7 for difficulty, but 7 out of 7 for carry potential. Again, it's not too much time invested and you're getting an insane late game carry out of it. What makes it a little bit more difficult to play her is her lack of mobility. You're gonna have to rely on nothing but movement to kite your enemies, and while you can use your E and even your W to try to help, your opponents can maneuver around them. When her flash is down, Jinx is very vulnerable to ganks, especially if she doesn't have an enchanter support to keep her safe. As a result, she's a little more dependent on her team than some other marksmen. In return, you're accessing one of the best scaling carries in the game. Jinx's range and damage output are definitely top tier, and you can't counter her out of any game since she can just farm up and make a comeback. No pun intended, but Jinx is explosive in teamfights due to her reset mechanic. If she manages to score that one takedown during teamfights, she can deal some insane damage and hard carry her team to victory. The same way you're afraid of a Katarina or Darius cleaning up a fight, Jinx can do the same thing and a lot of the time, the enemy team isn't ready for what's coming. Finally, we'll conclude with supports. For supports, we have Blitzcrank, Milio, and Brand as the OP picks in their respective archetypes. We'll focus on Brand for this patch because he's easy, but still finds himself as one of the best carries in the game. The only thing that you really need to focus on when playing Brand are positioning and landing your abilities. Easier said than done, but you honestly need to do this with any champion. It's just the core fundamentals of League of Legends, with the exception of Yumi of course, where positioning is basically done by your teammates. Back on the topic though, once you do get the hang of hitting your abilities, you're gonna absolutely destroy solo queue. During the laning phase, Brand deals an insane amount of poke damage. Landing a single rotation of spells can put your enemies at a low enough health that they basically can't play the laning phase anymore. Once teamfights begin, Brand's damage output allows him to single-handedly shift the tides. One rotation of abilities can either one-shot a squishy or deal significant enough AoE damage to change the outcome of the fight entirely. In low elo, your opponents are also more likely to clump, giving you that juicy dopamine rush when you see them get hit by your W, E, and R while stacked together. I definitely recommend trying to control choke points so you can more easily find these clumps. Now that we've finished with our supports, we've concluded our low elo tier list for patch 13.7. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, feel free to let us know what you thought in the comment section below, and also check out the description for a link to join our Discord community as well as our other social platforms. Or you can also follow me on Instagram or TikTok at Nathan underscore ING. Anyway, good luck in your game summoners, and I'll see you all in the next one.